Hi, Mark. So uh, this is Mark Figueras from Keynest, which is a service which does uh, key delivery. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit what you're doing with your company, Mark? Hi, Luca. Thank you for having me. Um, so yes, um, Keynest, we are a network of local stores, typically small supermarkets around the corner. There are 24-7 where we physically hold keys for the apartments and the properties of our customers. Our customers are typically uh, Airbnb host or short-term rental property managers, um, and they use us to hold keys so they can be collected by their staff, their guests, their cleaners, maintenance, um, whoever uh, is required, really. We provide a full track service, um, so every time the keys are collected or dropped off from the local store, um, we automatically notify our customer. It's a really simple um, solution to the check-in problem, uh, which is quite problematic in a lot of places. Um, we started in London uh, four years ago. Um, we're now operating in, in most countries in the EU, as well as the US and Canada. So I think one of the advantages of uh, Keynest over other solutions is that it is uh, high-tech in a way, but it's guaranteed by humans. Like nothing can go wrong in a way like that the key is delivered by hand by the guy at the bar or the shop owner and there's no machines which can be broken or offline right could you tell me a bit more about that absolutely very good point so um a big area of concern for airbnb hosts is oh well you know what happens if the system fails and my guest is going to be stranded and then i'm going to have to pay a hotel and he's going to cancel the booking well, uh, this cannot happen with us because um, we provide all of our stores with um, a mobile phone uh, and a safe to put the keys. Um, the, when you come as a guest to collect your keys, uh, you will say, hi, I want to collect a key. Here is my collection code. It's six digits. Um, the shopkeeper will punch in the collection code into our uh, mobile device um, and it will, he will hand over the keys. The keys have a tracking fob on it. Um, this tracking fob allows us to track the keys whilst keeping the keys anonymous um, for uh, the shopkeeper, which is obviously important to guarantee the security. Um, and uh, the whole system um, is backed by 24 seven support. So if the guest arrives and the keys are not there because the host forgot to drop them off, which happens uh, sometimes, even though the, the host does the best to plan, then we can assist the guest, uh, multi-language, 24-7, um, and contact the host if necessary, arrange another set of keys uh, to be handed over. So we're there to make sure that the check-in is 100% reliable. Uh, this is something you don't get with a lockbox or uh, with the smart lock. Um, we can guarantee that we will work out um, in 100% of the, of the check-in cases. Obviously, if you haven't dropped off your keys, we cannot make it magically appear, um, but we'll, we will certainly assist the guest for you in a similar way to the way you would be received in a hotel reception desk. Yeah, I, I was in Rome a few weeks ago and some of our friends was using another system and the, the key lock didn't work. So she had to completely change the, the afternoon plans and check in the guest why she was planning not to check in the guest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I see, I see an advantage. What about, and that's like a honest question, you have introduced another variable, which is the human variable. I mean, humans are in a way worse than machines. So the fact <laughs> that uh, the, 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 the person who has to give the keys, how, how is it working? How do you deal with funny scenarios which, I don't know, don't come to my mind right now? Uh, yeah. um, it's a good question. Um, the good thing about humans is that you can always find an, an understanding. Um, so the humans that work in, in, in our stores, um, that is their job and um, they are getting paid for doing that. Uh, the same way when you go to a hotel and, and you, you, you're received by someone uh, behind the reception desk, that's a human too, uh, who can make mistakes and might have gotten your booking wrong. Um, in our case, we've designed application the security around uh, the way the keys are handled such that there is no possibility of a mistake. Uh, because we have a tracker on the keys, as soon as it comes near the shop or as soon as it goes out of the shop, we can track the key and we know that the key has left the shop. Um, so there's no possibility there of the keys getting, uh, disappearing uh, magically or, um, uh, or appearing without us being notified. Uh, we automatically find out about such cases uh, immediately and we can uh, respond appropriately. 
Okay, so you have the, the key and the, the, the knob, what do you call this plastic with the NC, yeah, NC fiend, eh, NSF, what do you call it? Uh, NFC fog. And I never remember this thing. Yeah, so that one is completely connected to the key. There's no way to take it out. Uh, it's attached to the key. Obviously, if you wanted to take it out, you could. Um, but uh, it, it, there is no reason why a guest or a host would um, you, take the key out from the fob. The bar that doesn't know the address, basically. So Exactly. We don't hold okay. addresses ourselves. Okay. Uh, oh, we've okay. got no interest in holding the addresses either. Okay. Um, we obviously have uh, secure protocols not to be hacked, but uh, we wouldn't want to be attractive uh, as a hacker target. Yeah, okay, because there's no online. It's just a very, it's a proximity. Uh, you only get the key close to the box and then exactly. it records the presence. It's not something which can be hacked online. Absolutely. Okay, that's that's cool. Uh, I, I am very pro self-check-in. I actually, maybe four years ago right now, I, I was thinking to do something in this space and I went to a company which was distributed, <laughs> building distributing machines for keys. Then I didn't go through because I was too much to a big endeavor, so I, I, I quit it. But then I, all these companies started popping up, and there's many companies doing this now. So that's for sure. Uh, I would say it's, it's going to be as standard as having in the internet. If you don't have self checking options, well, unless you really define yourself as a boutique service where there's a human check in which is done properly, everybody's going to have to have it. So this. This part of the market is, is growing and is going to grow a lot. Uh, last question about, about your company. Uh, the, the part, I mean, it really works well when you have a lot of capillarity, right? Where it's very close to the apartment. So how do you deal with that? Do you have many, many places? Absolutely. So we have a very dense network. Um, is it possible to share the screen here? Um, yeah. Yes, it is. Quick I don't know if it's going to record it, but let's try Yeah, that's cool. Can you see? It's, it's in the Italian version. I see prices now. Okay, the just map. Quickly show you the map of London. Um, sure. So you can see our network here. In London, we've got 500 stores. And so we usually are within 30 seconds to a minute walk uh, from the nearest train okay. station or tube station uh, of every property. Um, okay. Obviously, we're not there yet with every city in the world, um, but we've got more than 500 cities um, and we try to grow our network in response to customer requests. Okay, that's cool. All right, great. So let's pass to the, to the difficult part, this is the, block, <laughs> the blockchain part. Um, give me a second because now I lost the questions. Here, here it is. Okay, so uh, what are your thoughts on the blockchain in general, if you have some, if you follow it a little bit, even if you don't know anything, because you've heard about blockchain and most people are like, okay, I know the blockchain is there and I don't know what it is. So just give me, give me an idea. Where, where do you stand with this blockchain thing? Yeah, I'm, up. <laughs> so I'm probably uh, one of the most newbies person to be interviewed on this, on this subject here, um, which is actually probably a good thing because I think more people need to learn about it. Um, the way I understand the blockchain is uh, essentially a distributed uh, ledger uh, that allows people to uh, certify the fact that uh, some transaction has happened or some event has occurred um, okay. without to be uh, written in some central way. It's, uh, you describe it very well. And this description, which is the one just going around, has is a bit like, and I always do this example, is a bit like saying, what is a car? And you say, it's, there's an engine where you put gas and things start moving and, and that's it. Sure. And then the, yeah. what's missing is like, okay, but what can I do with it, right? And the answer is like, well, you can do many things, but you know, the, the easiest thing to, you can do is to drive a car. And you go, what is a car? Well, it takes you from point A and B, and it's better than a horse, right? And, and then the next thing is like, yeah, but horses go on the roads we have now where the car gets stuck. That's where we stand on the blockchain. It's, in theory, it's very good. In practice, we don't have the infrastructure yet for, for anything. Uh, so what we get, we're going to get there is, is, is as big as cars versus, versus uh, horses. Okay, so you have a basic uh, um, understanding of the engineering part of the blockchain. Uh, 
and I won't, I won't waste your time in explaining what it is, but uh, what, what, do you see any opportunities for you, for your company on the blockchain, or is it a bit too early for that? Maybe I can give you a few hints in this. Um, I guess not directly. Um, one thing that's important for us is to partner with uh, the leaders in our industry. Um, so we are official partners of Airbnb, we're official partners of Guesty, um, we are official partners of um, other leading companies in this space. Um, and that is good for us because it allows our customers to use Kines in a more seamless way. Um, so you don't, you don't need a Kines account, you can log in directly with Guesty or with Airbnb. Um, and we're talking to other companies about this too. So as the blockchain comes on, uh, probably there will be many more uh, players in this industry or platforms um, to which uh, we can integrate with so that we can provide the most seamless communication possible for the host, for the guest, and for every, everyone involved. What, what, is the, the, what is the integration with Airbnb, let's say? What does it do exactly? Um, so the integration with Airbnb allows uh, Airbnb hosts um, to use their Airbnb accounts to automatically upload their information to Keynest regarding their listings. Um, and then um, it would in principle also allow us to automatically share collection codes uh, with um, the Airbnb guest uh, through the Airbnb messaging platform. Okay. Um, this is something we haven't rolled out, um, but we, it's, it's available for us to roll out if we want. We have the permissions from the Airbnb um, API to be able to pull that information through. Okay, that, I was waiting for this word. I was waiting for the word permission. And do you have permission from all of the OTAs? No, so what we find is that um, of all the OTAs, Airbnb is probably one of the only ones that has a significant number of customers that are single channel. Okay. Um, the, the majority of the others are used with a channel manager. And so okay. therefore, it's more interesting for us to integrate directly with the channel manager, say Rentals United, for example, than with each OTA individually, because in any case, the customer will want to integrate with the entire platform of channels. So therefore, the channel manager is more relevant than the final OTA. Okay. Um, so one of the things which the blockchain, for which the blockchain could be interesting for you is the concept of permissionless. Um, any listing on the blockchain is going to be on an open API. So you can integrate with any blockchain project, if it's a real blockchain project, of course, but that's another thing. So any open blockchain will give you access to all the listings. Only the listing creator itself, so the host or the property manager can say, no, I don't want to connect with mm. Ines. But there is no platform in between. There's nobody who can tell you, no, you can't. It's a peer-to-peer -peer connection. So for you as a service, like a company which does services um, and needs integrations, blockchains are good news because it's bringing on the, in the market uh, an open inventory, basically. So Fabulous. if any company tells you from the blockchain tells you, no, you have to pay for the API or no, we don't want you to connect, that's not a real blockchain company. Just put a blockchain label on top, maybe to get some funding, but open, <laughs> blockchains are open. And a very basic idea is that the only owner of the data is the person who did it. So the only owner of the listing is the host and the only owner of the review is the guest. There's no company in between. Okay, so uh, expect a bit more openness. And it could actually get to the point where you don't need to connect to all these uh, different companies. What you need is one listing which feeds your, your business, right? So if it's on the blockchain, then you have a guarantee that you can have access to this listing. Even if tomorrow, for any reason, Airbnb decides to close the API or you, for any reason you don't have access to this listing, we are bringing on the market open listings. Okay. I see this is not a pain point for you at the moment, uh, but in the very long term, we don't know what can happen, right? Uh, maybe there's going to be many companies doing the same thing you do, and just a few of them have a, spe a special relation with OTAs or channel managers, and some companies stay out, and with the blockchain, this is not possible. So we are giving an exit to, to, for these kind of, of problems. Um, 
Excellent. Well, the APIs are super important for us. Uh, you know, when, when we talk about large customers or, or uh, integrations, um, that is how you scale. It's impossible right. to scale without an API. And, and the more open APIs we have, the faster that this industry will move forward. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you have open APIs right now, but they are permissioned APIs. You, you had to talk to the people and say, can I connect? With blockchains, you don't have to talk. It's completely permissionless. It's like, I don't know, uh, email. It's, it's protocols. So you don't ask for permission. They're just there and just connect. Uh, the only permission you have to you ask is to the, to the hosts in this case, but of course, you're not going to have to ask to each single host. It's going to be every host at the beginning decides if it's open or not, and they're going to be open because what's the point not, not to allow companies to, to connect? Uh, so it doesn't actually solve any problem for you today because you don't have a, an open API problem. Uh, it kind of gives you, it's going to give you a guarantee in the long term that now listings will be open. So even if somebody closes APIs, you still have a, a backup plan. Um, okay, so do, do you see any dangers in, in this kind of reasoning that listings are not you know, protected in a way anymore. They belong to the host. Do you see any dangers in the blockchain in general? Um, yeah, you've got uh, fraud uh, in this industry to be wary of. And I think a lot of our customers, the way we deal with fraud is they have increasingly complicated algorithms with they either develop themselves or they buy. Uh, which allow them to filter out the guests based on things like how long ago did they book, the name on the credit card, does it match the address and the country, et cetera. Um, I don't know how the blockchain is going to deal with what fraud. What kind of fraud do you, do you, are you attacked with? Um... So, so not, our, not ourselves personally, but we've okay. got customers, for example, who have uh, free booking on booking.com uh, okay. with free cancellation and then they've got competitors booking each other's websites uh, just to block some availability okay. um, or you've got people who are planning a party and they're um, they're going to book an apartment with a stolen credit card and then okay. there's problems everywhere okay um, so we hear about those kind of problems and, and I'd be interested to know what can the blockchain do to help prevent those problems or is it going to exacerbate? Yeah, I, I would say in terms of uh, profiles, like people doing things, uh, the blockchain hardens the profile. What do I mean by that? Uh, now I can open 10 Airbnb accounts uh, or 10 booking.com accounts and I can make a booking and then disappear. Uh, you can do the same with the blockchain. It's actually even more anonymous than that. But uh, once you have a profile, which acquires reviews, uh, this becomes very precious to you. And uh, you, you're not going to burn it by doing these kind of things. And hosts will be free to say, okay, I don't want to get bookings from uh, any account which has less than a certain level of bookings or transaction in value, right? Excellent. And today, the choice is this kind of policing, this kind of decision is taken by the, the, the platform like again, Airbnb, for instance, it, on the blockchain, every host is free to manage this kind of uh, security. So let's say in, in, in today's OTAs, I'm basically forced to accept any booking. And that creates yeah. a lot of problems. Well, in the blockchain, no, I can say, look, I rent a villa for $1,000 a night. I don't want to get some random new account to be able to book the villa. And you can yeah. do it yourself. You can, you can decide this kind, what kind of risk you want to you wanna get. So that should, in a way, um, limit this kind of risks. And there's another thing. You're going to be able, as a host, to choose in which platforms to be. Again, today we live in a duopoly or in you know, two or three companies. We don't have a choice. Uh, in the future, there's going to be a thousand companies. And I'm going to say, my kind of house wants this kind of customers. And you, you go like only certain verticals, uh, only certain localities. So it's, it's you kind of... Uh, decide what kind of people you want in your house, okay? By choosing on what platforms to be. You're going to be maybe in trips and in five more. Or you're going to be in none, just one specific where you got only vegetarians because you don't want your pants to be used for meat, right? And then you're going to be able to do, it's of course an exaggeration, yeah. but you can filter out the customers according to your, uh, to, to your offering. And that's again for the parties, it's the same thing. You, let's say you are 
in a city where there's a lot of parties and today the way it's dealt with is like you get anybody you hope it goes well and if it goes badly um you 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 claim some some refund but like in barcelona you get these incredible fines for noise right and uh so you can afford it what you can do is to say i want only guests who have at least 50 very very good reviews and the the the, the people who book they, they can't actually book your place right so it gives granularity uh, and, and control to to the host so i'm not saying that's a solution because this is theoretical at the moment but by giving power back to the people who, who actually create the experience of the accommodation that may be a solution indeed and i, th I think where you're where the blockchain is particularly helpful is in that the reviews will be real whereas today it is not so difficult to get a fake review on a platform you could do a fake review on the okay uh you could do a fake review on the blockchain by doing a fake booking through like through a friend okay. uh, you can still do that but you know um why the algorithm the search algorithm could say okay reviews are taken into consideration also according to the transaction which we had so if you have a 50 dollar 50 euro review for one night it's going to be less important than a, a seven night booking right i'm sure perfect otas do this anyway but uh it's it's a bit like the the alignment of interest is different uh mm. the platforms here are not here to make as many bookings as possible and as, as much commission as possible we are more like a protocol we want both guests and hosts to be happy uh, and to have so we have the, the alignment of interest is much closer than than otas That's exciting. Uh, also, probably more sustainable um, because a lot of these OTAs are now seeing backlash from their property managers and hosts negotiating rates, etc. Well, can you tell me more about that? What do you mean by that? There's more negotiating. Well, I mean, you you go to any short-term rentals conference, and everybody will be telling you about how to get direct bookings, right? Because right. the OTA is charged so much. Right. Um, so. How does a blockchain charge for its services? Okay, um, that's also interesting. We as trips, uh, we're going to charge 5% uh, okay. on total, which is very little. It's probably lower than the cost of this intermediation. It's lower than the direct bookings. Uh, will this be enough? Will it not be enough? We don't know. Uh, if it goes the way it should go, which means that we become a protocol with very little costs, uh, it's going to be more than enough. Um, but as I said, there's going to be a thousand projects like ours. Somebody will charge 1%, somebody will charge 10%. And the, the commission which is going to be charged will depend on the uh, efficiency of, of the whole of the, of the system, right? So my bet is it's going to be, we're going to go the same way phone calls went. It was, used to be very expensive to call abroad because mm -hmm. everything was in the hands of rent-seeking telecom companies. And if the internet hadn't happened, so if Skype hadn't happened, today I would be talking to you on this call, paying, I don't know, 50, 50 euro an hour. Because there's a, a third party company which tries to make money out of this. Then a decentralized protocol arrived and that was like internet and then VOP, right? Voice over IP. And it became free. Now we're talking for free, right? So the, th the same thing is probably going to happen in, in the platforms. They are going to become protocols. And the, the basic cost is going to be transactional, like basically nothing. And you are going to only pay for the extra service that the platform offers. So you won't need to pay anymore for payments. And this is about 2 3% easily we pay paying today. You won't need to pay for uh, a huge company behind Airbnb or, or Booking.com. Um, governance again will be done by the network. You're still gonna pay for like the last layer of, of the company try to make things easier. Maybe some customer service. My bet is in in the long term is gonna be basically for free. Bookings are gonna get as free as phone calls. So that that's the idea. Again, is it's gonna happen? When it's gonna happen? We don't know. But I think it's gonna go in that direction. I hope so. That sounds uh, a lot better than uh, what uh, a lot of our clients say about the OTA. So, five yes, percent is a is a major improvement already.
Yeah, uh, and I think that uh, even more than the cost, which is very high, it's it's the concept that we are working. All of us are working on platforms which we don't own, and so we are working on somebody else's ground. And at any moment, any host can be kicked out, or you know, it's called deplatforming, or even worse, to stop getting bookings, but was still being there and don't know why. Maybe he's done something wrong. Maybe he didn't accept the ridiculous prices suggested by smart prices sometimes in Airbnb. Uh, so we are working on somebody else's land. And when, when we move on the blockchain, then we're working on, uh, on the rule of law because now the land doesn't belong to anybody and you can have your own, your own businesses based on, on, on smart contracts, which means rule of law. The, the, the rules are very clear and nobody can change them. And you are working in the long term is much safer than working on somebody else's uh, land, basically. Um, is, there, is there anything, let's say one thing which you don't really understand about blockchain, you would like to, to know more, to understand? You know, when you hear, hear blockchain, maybe you go like, okay, but what, but what about this thing? Is there any doubt I can maybe clarify for you? Take some revenue uh, because of its commission. Um, it'd be interesting to get a bit more clarity as to what happens to this money, because the, all the claims about the blockchain are often, you know, everything is going to be seamless and automated, um, and you you can see companies who are doing that without blockchain. Um, so it's very interesting that you are able to offer a much better commission uh, than the current main OTAs are. Is that because of the blockchain? Um, and if so, what's happening to that commission? Is it uh, then being reinvested in some way that is contractually bi binding from the blockchain? Okay, that, that's a beautiful question, actually. Uh, and that, that brings out the uh, governance issue. Uh, governance means who decides what. Uh, today, uh, everything in, in our specific project, everything is decided basically by me. So you have the classic CEO which you know, who listens to everybody and then takes a decision. And this is a, a, a fragile part of the, of the project. Uh, so right now, we decided together what to do with the 5%. There's a white paper where you see what happens. And actually, there's a business plan where you see exactly what happens. And it's basically reinvested to make the platform bigger. There's marketing, there's development, etc. It's just like a classic company. There's nothing new there. Uh, but there's no guarantee. Uh, I could decide to change my mind and, you know, do it differently. And yeah. what I'm saying this is a fragile point is because where we, the direction we're going to is, is towards, is much better, which is decentralized, also in the decision making. Uh, I, I'll give you an example. This is, I don't know, maybe five years from now, but it's going to that direction. There is software being built on the blockchain today. It's called DAO software which means decentralized autonomous organization. And there's a specific example uh, which makes you understand what I'm talking about. Ideally, let's say that you want to invest into, into trips and uh, you don't give money to the company which we have in Estonia. You don't send euros. You buy tokens. Uh, you, you first buy Ether, which is this cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. You send money to a smart contract. And you get our tokens. And these tokens represent ownership. They give you also voting rights. Okay? And they are on the market. So you can sell them maybe more expensive if things go well. It's a bit like buying shares, right? And you, this transaction happens automatically. There's nobody sending you the tokens. It's a smart contract. So in a decentralized way, you have acquired, even with 100 euro or 1,000 euro, you have acquired some ownership of the platform, right? And um, this money goes into a smart contract, okay? Let's say that we raise 100,000 euro that month. And who decides what to do with that money? Well, again, the network can decide. There's a voting. It says, what are we going to do with this money? Like 30% for marketing, 20% for something else, 50% for development. And people are going to vote uh, probably proportionally to the amount of tokens they have. And, uh, and then the money is released automatically into the wallets of people working for, for the platform. And the miracle, the magic that happened here is that this happened without my intervention. This happened without 
the company intervention. And if the company closes tomorrow, and if I go, I go crazy tomorrow, it doesn't matter. It still goes on. It's decentralized. Okay? So you are going to feel part of this platform much more than being simply a customer or somebody using the platform. You are this platform because you put the money, you decide the things, and what do you get in exchange? Well, you get a 5% or maybe 3% uh, commission-based platform. And How does that compare to being a shareholder? Your, because uh, the, you, being a shareholder, a shareholder, the board decides, okay? And uh, the, which may be actually is probably much more efficient in a way. But the problem we have with OTAs today is that shareholders are investors who want the, let, let's take Airbnb, it's the easiest one. They want Airbnb to extract as much commissions as possible, okay? But if you are a host, or if you are a guest, or if you are a company like yours, you would like these these uh, platforms to get less money as possible because there's more money left for the others, right? So the, it's not the align the, the interests are not, are not aligned because everything is being is being started by investors. That these, these are the people who decide. So unless you become a big investor in Airbnb, then your what Airbnb is doing to you is not is not aligned with your interests. In our case, everybody who invests is also somebody uses the platform and there's no way to get the money out of it. Right. Yeah. But again, this is not yeah. for tomorrow morning. This is for five, 10 years from now. So that's the direction. So what we're trying to do ah. is to make this completely uh, decentralized so that we as an industry build something which we can use. The, the advantage we want is like, I'm a property manager. I save hundred thousand dollars or euro a year in commissions. Me as a guest, I spend less. And you as a service company, actually, what is your advantage? There's more money on the table for your service. If, if all, your guests, all your customers have very low margins, they're gonna be very careful. There's Keynest and there's many other services that would like to use, but they don't have enough money. So they're gonna just use a few of them. Imagine that 10% is liberated and it is extra money. And they double their operative margin. Now they can spend money on Keynes or other services too. So the whole industry uh, profits from that. It's an interesting point. One thing I like about boxing as well is also that it's it kind of levels the playing field. Sorry, I've got this light here. Um, it kind of levels the playing field because I guess on OTAs you can get preferred rates based on your size. Uh, whereas presumably in blockchain, there is no sort of uh, volume discount. Um, and so that's interesting for us because the, the, the flatter the, the competition, the, the more the margins are transparent and, and in also in many ways uh, lower because it attracts more people into the industry. Um, and that benefits us because checking is a cost saving solution. Um, so we, we provide a service that automates check-in and therefore it saves people anywhere between, uh, you know, 10 and 30 euros on every booking. Um, obviously that's, that's, that kind of service performs much better in an environment where everyone is competing with each other. Um, and hence we've benefited from the boom that the sector has seen, uh, particularly with property managers, uh, now going after landlords, uh, for the same properties and going after guests for the same bookings. So it'd be interesting to see how um, how affects the fragmentation of the industry. Currently, we've got a lot of property, especially in Italy, you have a lot of very small property managers. Mm -hmm. um, so it'd be interesting to see, what do you think? Do you think that the blockchain will increase or decrease the fragmentation of the industry? Uh, in terms of how many apartments people have, right? especially in, in terms of how fragmented they are. So is it going to be more a case of a few operators managing thousands of properties oh, okay. or thousands of operators managing a few each? Um, I don't know uh, because the fragmentation uh, doesn't, I don't think it really depends on, on the OTA itself. It depends on uh, how big ones can actually uh, uh, reduce costs by being more organized. So, I don't know. That's a difficult question for me. Uh, I think that uh, there's always going to be there's always going to be small ones because small ones uh, are able to keep a very high 
quality, why property managers is struggling with that. There's too many moving parts. And uh, there's so many, uh, okay, maybe I have an answer. If the block, when the blockchain, I don't say if, when the blockchain becomes a big thing, and uh, it's gonna be much easier to integrate every single service. So one of the reasons, or maybe the main reason it's so hard to be a property manager today is that you have to deal with different softwares and they are all kind of integrated, maybe depending whatever, right? Exactly. Uh, everything starts from the fact that the, the data we all need to make things smooth, it's siloed in the OTAs. And then, yeah, you got the channel managers, you got, you got ways to get together, but it's all, it's all a patching, right? And when you get everything out in the open and the, every listing and every booking and every price is open, then you can, every service can, is going to connect to the blockchain, which is open and permissionless. So nobody can kick you out. Every development you're going to do is going to be on something where nobody can kick you out from. Every de development you do on the closed OTAs, you never know, right? So you're going to develop on that. You're going to develop on... Uh, you know, the email started with, um, no, sorry, HTTP at the beginning started with both, I think it was Gopher, which was a, a company internet, and then HTTP, which was open internet, and HTTP was worse. It, it technically worse, but because it was open, everybody bet on HTTP, and this is the internet now. So once you are sure that a certain protocol is open and you have zero risk, you go for that one. So it's going to be easier to... Uh, harmonize all the softwares and so that may make it make the life easier for property managers which means less fragmentation that could be one of the out, uh, outcomes it's hard to say actually it's look, looking forward to seeing how that pans out i mean there are some some cases you've got certain pieces of software where it is in a way a natural monopoly you're better off with one company running the whole thing like google you're better off with having one search engine than 10,000 search engines depending on what you're looking for because it's just much easier for the consumer um in the case of keynest well because we're a network and we've got huge network effects it is much more effective to have one keynest and uh, even two keynes uh, it makes a huge difference in terms of the cost that you can charge uh, to be able to provide a much lower price because of that um if if the blockchain brings scale uh, then it, that will be a very welcome development for, for us and for other companies in the industry. Thank you. Uh, you know, um, I, I strongly disagree with the fact that it's better there's only one Google because every company which acquires too much power then abuses uh, the customers and that's happening with Google at yeah. incredible levels. And uh, when we bring this to, to our industry, um, even having only one keyness, that will be, I think, detrimental for, for the whole system because you know, then you would have a monopoly and you can raise prices. But what's really interesting is that there can be uh, 10 keyness or 10 similar services and they're all integrated. So the, the user doesn't suffer. Okay, I can, I can jump from one keyness to the other without any effort. And that makes it easier for you also in the incoming customers. Yeah. So there's going to be thing we're interested in as well is is providing a marketplace for ourselves, so enabling our uh, shop owners to set their own prices. So ah, in okay. a way, we'd be uh, you know, allowing the market to run itself because there are some areas where, sure, it's a very um, rural area and it makes no sense to charge so much. Um, okay. There are other areas where actually the price is justified. So um, be interesting to see how that plays out. In the end, there are so many companies in our industry that are platforms themselves. Yeah. Um, and so the whole new layer of complexity um, when you look at pricing. So you would let the market decide pricing, which is much more uh, exactly. Uh, it's, it's, it's more precise than deciding centrally. Yeah, but definitely. Okay, Mark, thank you. We went a bit over time, but that was very interesting. Uh, so thank My you pleasure. very much for 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 your time, and uh, I let you know when when this is online. And thank you so much again. Thanks, Luca. All the best. Where can we? Uh, kind of follow the blockchain and how it affects the best way is to it, hospitality you got a some sort of newsletter or yeah website? there's a newsletter yeah if you go in ships community there's a newsletter and that's the easiest way to be to be in touch again because email is a decentralized platform a protocol so you're always going to get our email almost if it doesn't go in spam but if you follow us through <laughs> facebook or other things you never know when they show it, they show it or not because it's centralized. So, <laughs> so email is always the best.
Brilliant. I'll give you my email then. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take bye care. Bye.